Welcome everyone to another exciting episode of Final Drive TV. Today we're here at Thunder Hill Raceway Park in Willows, California with the season opener of the Nito Tires United States Touring Car Championship. My name is Loretto Stribling and joining me today, as always, is Rick Nanini. Hi Loretto, it's great to be here. We have an excellent show for you today. Uh, the USCCC is huge this year and the competition has really picked up and I can't wait. Well, and we have a great lineup of cars today. As always, at the first race of the season, there's lots of unknowns. We have lots of new drivers, new cars, and fresh engines. This could be anyone's race to win. Yeah, that's so true, huh? So, Rick, why don't we get down to business and meet the other members of our broadcast team that are standing by. We have Jennifer Grossman and Jeff Lepper. Hi, this is Jennifer. Welcome to the... Thunder Hill Raceway Park. We're up above Sacramento, California, near Willows. Uh, it's a beautiful day for racing. The hills are green. The sun is shining. Fantastic weather. We're here with the Nitto Tires U.S. Touring Car Championship. And I have here with me Jeff Lepper, who is helping with the announcing today. And he also has some uh, personal relations who are involved with the racing series. His father is uh, racing the uh, Chevy Cobalt. So, Jeff, who is your favorite pick for today? And you can't say your dad. I'm sorry. He's disqualified. <laughs> Come on. That's not fair at all. I, I got to say that Kurt Simmons is going to be really tough in his neon SRT4. I mean, a returning champion. He's back again. I'm sure he's going to be fast. We have some new vehicles coming in. We got the, a couple new Mini Cooper S's that are here now. And, of course, Mini stepping up with their big contingency. Thanks a lot to BMW Mini for that. There's uh, Pete Bovenberg, of course, co-champion with Kurt Simmons. He's going to be running the Civic Solo this year, so he'll be actually competing with his teammate in the 2008 season. So it's definitely going to be a great, great race. Uh, so, Jeff, can you give us a little backstory of some of the new runners? We have uh, Rob Rojas. We have all sorts of new names out there. Well, of course, we've got 2004 returning champion Jeff Lepper uh -uh, on the announcing. Uh, of course, I was co-champion with my dad, Tom, who's racing a new Chevy Cobalt turbocharged now, 2008 model. We have Dave Bongiovanni, who's returning as the team owner in his car that Dave Brown is a 2005 champion in. Rob Rojas, ironically enough, is in the Spoon Sports Acura RSX from OPAC Racing, who Dave Brown was won the championship in that car in 2006. So it's really uh, just everybody's bouncing around and moving. We've got new time tracks going on. We've got new mods to cars. Of course, the biggest thing is this brand new Nitto tire. And we're, it's untested. The teams got their tires, I think, four days ago when they came over. So it's going to be that first practice session is going to be very, very interesting with new guys and new cars, new tires, and new modifications under the cars. Well, that was this morning, but since then we've had some developments. Pete Bovenberg needed a tow to get his car back, among other stuff that happened. So with that, we go back to Jennifer and Jeff. So Jeff, we've already had some excitement this morning with qualifying. We have uh, Rob Rojas moving into the Chevy Cobalt. What happened there? I don't know. We got a lot of stuff going on right now. We had our first provisional poll on Saturday's qualifier. Kurt Simmons, 2007 co-champion, had a huge off in qualifying today. The cars damaged. The crews out there, they're banging with hammers. They're trying to get them ready. We got like less than two hours for the race. So your current series champion, pole sitter, is sitting on the sidelines right now. You have Rod Rojas and the Spoon Sports OPAC Racing Acura RSX who is having difficulties with his car. So Tom Lepper is giving up his seat and his Cobalt letting Rod go into that seat. I mean, I don't know where even what to do right now. I mean, who's going to be where? What's going to happen? Who are we going to line up? How are we going to get this race going? It's just, oh my God, what do we do? Thanks, guys. Back to you upstairs. Wow, just when you thought everything was going so calm. Now tell me, Rick, with all these drivers swapping cars, what are the rules and regulations regarding this race? Basically, they would have to qualify the car that they're going to race in. If they didn't drive the same car, if they swapped cars, that's fine, but they would have to qualify it again. So if they don't have the time, because a lot of the time these sessions are too short, they don't doesn't allow them to do that. So that means that they have to start the back of the field. So the gamble here is you start the back of the field in a potentially faster car, or do you start where you qualify, but possibly you're going to have problems? Well, that clears that up for me. Earlier in the day, we wanted to talk to one of the new drivers this season. Jennifer had a chance to catch up with Bob Shear. He's one of the drivers of the new Mini Coopers this year. Bob, there have been some changes to the rules this year. We've had a tire change. Uh, tell me how the rules impact your car. 
I think they should help. Uh, it was a little unfair last year. There's some big horsepower cars, all-wheel drives, and we were just a back marker for them. Uh, it was very hard to compete with that type of uh, uh, horsepower. We're just a little 1.6 liter with uh, just around 200 horsepower. There's still a lot more horsepower, but I think they'll get the weights balanced out to make the playing field more level. Uh, that Dodge is super fast still. Um, yeah, I don't think anyone's has anything for him, but we'll see. Now, you mentioned some extensive uh, work that you did on the car to make it a little more competitive this year. Can you explain to me why you had to do that? Uh, the stock Mini Cooper uh, engine management system didn't work for us. Uh, we kept uh, going in what they call diagnostic limp mode, where we could only go at 3,000 RPM, and you can't race at 3,000 RPM. We just got passed and came to two races in DNF because of that limp mode. We decided to go to a MoTeC M4 operating system uh, to just standalone engine controller, and we had to rewire the whole car. It took us about eight months. And uh, unfortunately, after the spring last year, we weren't able to attend any more USTCC races because of the rewiring job. So uh, we got that all rewired, and we've been testing, and hopefully it'll hang together now. It seemed to be doing real well. We had a little bit of a belt issue yesterday. We kept throwing belts. But uh, if we can keep the belt on, we'd hope to do well, real well today. Yeah, Bob's uh, Mini is going to be a force to be reckoned with this season. You know, the big flaw is that they haven't had a lot of testing time today. Uh, they've been uh, stuck in tech, doing uh, last-minute uh, things here and there, little knick-knack stuff here and there, but they've actually done a lot of testing this season, so uh, there's a lot of speed built into that car. Don't let all that talk about 1600cc engines fool you. Uh, those guys have a lot of speed in that car. They've got a big old supercharger on top, and Bob's an excellent driver, so they're, they're doing well. So if I can translate this, what you're trying to say is that the Mini Cooper is really cute? Uh, that's one way to say it, yes. How about we go down to Jennifer now, who has news on the starting order for us. Back on site here at Thunder Hill Raceway Park, getting ready for the Nitto Tires U.S. Touring Car Championship race. Uh, it's very exciting. We have uh, all sorts of excitement happening in the starting grid. I have the final countdown right here. We've got Kurt Simmons, who is last year's season champion, starting in pole position. He had some excitement with his car earlier in the race, and his team is frantically trying to get his car ready. Um, following him, we have Bob Shear in his Mini Cooper S. This is the best finish that we've had in, with Mini here at USTCC, so it should be exciting to see how he does amongst these other various cars. Uh, following him, we've got Pete Bovenberg, who is Kurt Simmons' teammate, driving his Civic. So it's the two teammates are in the uh, first two rows. It should be interesting to see how their competition plays out. Following them, Dave Bongiovanni, who is always a serious contender, driving his turbo four-wheel drive Evo. He should have a tremendous start off the line and really challenge those front runners. Uh, after that, we have Rob Rojas. He's driving an unfamiliar car, the Chevy Cobalt. He did some testing in it, but it's a really new competition for him. Uh, we have Rich Wu in the Acura. Uh, Rich Wu and Peggy Arsham competed and won third place last year, so they should compete very well. So it's about 92 degrees in this early spring day at Thunder Hill Raceway Park. It's always very warm. The drivers are driving the Nitto tires, and it's a new tire for them, so it should be interesting how they manage their tires with this heat situation. In conjunction that, Dave Bongiovanni is driving a very fast car, but it's also a very heavy car. Will he be able to get ahead of the front one runners and keep his tires cool enough to keep that advantage, or will he completely wipe out? It should be very interesting to see. Uh, we're also waiting to see what the front grid will really, really look like. If Kurt Simmons can't make it out there, we'll see a shuffle, and that will put uh, Dave in a different position starting off. Well, thanks, Jennifer. Okay, now we have Kurt Simmons out there with his Dodge, and it appears they've uh, fixed his car up. It's pretty amazing, considering he had crashed it during the qualifications. And now we have all the cars gridded up, and the drivers are getting ready for battle. Yeah, Kurt's uh, sponsored by MBO, which is a uh, body shop in the San Jose area, and uh, these guys know what they're doing, so that really helped. I'm sure having a body shop sponsor is always nice. Uh, they have the right tools and equipment to fix it, and they know what they're doing. So um, it is actually pretty amazing that everybody's here. These guys, there's a lot of other cars that were broken down and were fixing parts that uh, these guys can fix anything when under the gun. Well, on another note... Um are there any rules or regulations for 2008 that we haven't quite gone over yet for this race? 
Yeah, well, one of the big things for 2008 that was changed for the USCCC rules was the the way the car's weights are figured out. Uh, now they're going to a horsepower to weight formula, so uh, the more horsepower these cars basically put out, uh, then the more weight they have to carry in the cars. So it theoretically makes all the, the acceleration of all these cars the same, uh, no matter what, uh, and they're monitored by a max Q data acquisition in every car that uh, so they know who's got wh how much horsepower and what kind of acceleration they're putting out and it also will tell if uh, anybody's uh, sandbagging or cheating uh, it really shows that starting order for today's race. Starting on the pole position is Kurt Simmons in the Dodge SRT4. And outside of row one we have Bob Shear in his Mini Cooper S. Inside of row two is Pete Bovenberg in the MBO Honda Civic. And outside of row two we have Dave Bongiovanni in his Mitsubishi Evo. Inside of row three is Rod Rojas in the Chevy Cobalt SS Terminal. And outside of row 3, we have Rich Wu in his Acura Integra R. Inside of row 4 is RJ Reeves in the Acura Integra Type R. And outside of row 4, we have Gordon Pun in his Honda Civic. Inside of row 5 is Tom Milburn, Acura Integra. Outside of row 5, we have Jerry Bradbury in his Mini Cooper S. And finally, inside of row 6, last position is David Vaughn. College Honda S2000, yellow Honda. And now it's time to watch closely as these cars line up for the unique standing start. Take it away, Jeff. Green flag, green flag. All the cars got away okay. Nobody looks like nobody jumped the start. Nice clean start. There goes Richard Rue making it three wide going down the front straightaway. Looks like Kurt Simmons. And that wounded Neon SRT4 taking the point. Bob Shear in the Mini Cooper, followed by Kurt's teammate, Pete Bovenberg, in his Honda Civic. Wow, look at that great start by Kurt. Wow, that was amazing. What's even more amazing is that everyone behind him is still there. They're like a train. Right behind him, we have Bob Shear in the Ireland Engineering Mini, followed by Bovenberg in the MBO Honda Civic, and then bon, bon Giovanni in the White Good Sport Racing Evo. And Rojas in the Molecule Cobalt SS, and then the Honda S2000 of David Bodden. Yeah, Bodden actually got the best start of the bunch. Most of these guys are pretty much where they qualified, but Bodden picked up five or six spots that start. Let's take a look at the start again, now on board of Simmons' Dodge SRT4. Yeah, I think the MBO team has been uh, practicing the start. The new speed at the Dodge, which just rose the front tires at the start. But look at that, another perfect getaway for Kurt. That was, a, that was an awesome start because uh, he just came off the line with the right RPM and just planted his foot and just went for it. Now he's got clear sailing with nobody in front of him. Very nice job, Kurt. Okay, let's go a couple spots back on the grid now on board of the Honda of Pete Bovenberg. Yeah, Pete did pretty well here too, but uh, he could have launched a little harder. He came close to losing position or two there, but he hugs the inside line so nobody can sneak to the inside. He tucks behind the uh, mini of uh, Bob Shear. And uh, look at that now. He's, uh, it looks like the mini and Kurt are just going at it. The two of them are just bumper to bumper. And Pete's a few car lengths behind going into turn three here. And now it's going to a turn three. You can see mini. The mini's actually catching up to Kurt. It looks like it's actually much stronger to these tight sections in the track. But then the Honda's actually doing Closing up the gap a little bit while those, those two guys are fighting. But whoa, now over here, in turn five, look at that, coming out of turn five, almost loses it. It goes way wide, he almost loses it. Keep, it does at least a nice job of uh, keeping it on the track and not losing any time. Now let's go back on the uh, Cobalt of uh, Rod Rojas. This is what I like, uh, was talking about when I said uh, Bovenberg was hugging the inside. Look at that. The Rod could have gone to the inside of Pete, but Pete shut the door to basically tell him to forget about it. 
Now let's get on board the Rich Wu's Acura Integra Type R and see how he does at the start. Well, just take a look at Wu driving that Koenig Wheels Acura Integra. With all that traffic out there, it sure gets busy there. Um, he's really trying hard to get by these guys. Earlier today, they were fighting a short that really messed up their qualifying time. However, Rich was saying that the car was great, but it started to cut out and lose power. However, they couldn't duplicate the problem, so it remains to be one of those mystery problems. It certainly appears that the car is working fine now. Yeah, it sure does look like he's working fine. He's all over the cobalt of uh, Rojas there. Uh, whatever that problem was, you know, they probably missed some, uh, some time because of that. But uh, he sure does look like he's going over and uh, trying to pass that cobalt in front. But uh, the Cobalt's doing super aggressive. Look at that. He just catches some air going over turn five. He's trying to get by the Evo. The Evo's trying to get by Bovenberg. These guys are just driving 100%, giving it all they got on lap one, because they know this is the time they need to make a pass if this is going to work. Now, uh, with Bon Giovanni and Pete Bovenberg battling. Looks like it's a three-way battle for that fourth-place position right now. Looks like Rod Rojas and the Team Cobalt California Redline Oil Chevy Cobalt is coming up, making it a three-way battle. Sorry to cut you off there, Jeff. Vaughn's all over Rojas' Cobalt at turn three there. Vaughn's driving that Honda S2000 that's sponsored by Butte College. It's not too far away from here. The college kids actually work and maintain that car and learn about racing in the process. It's a great, great program, and Vaden's their professor. American Honda's actually behind the program, as are a few other corporate sponsors. Uh, this is a super deal he's got going there. Well, these are things that most people don't hear about racing, and it's really nice to see these programs come up. Uh, I really hope that professor has his A students working on his car. We have the top six cars currently separated by only four seconds right now, so it's a great five-way battle for the lead here in the 2008 Nitto Tires United States Touring Car Champion. Currently leading by Kurt Simmons. Oh, it looks like we had some problems there for Bob Shear in the Canyon Motorsports Mini. Coming over the second bypass hill, got a way sideways off into the dirt. Drop back from second to fifth position. You need to get those tires cooled off and get caught back up. Shear lost a bit of speed there at the kink of turn eight. It wasn't much, but it was enough that allowed Bovenberg to get side by side going into nine. Bon Giovanni in the Evo saw Pete get in there and uh, stuck his nose in there, managed to also get, uh, as did Rojas in the Cobalt. So with one small mistake, Shear dropped three positions right there. That's how tight this racing is. One mistake, and you can go back a bunch of spots in a heartbeat. Now Rojas, who had a run on Bon Giovanni, tries to get on the inside of the Evo at turn 10, and again at turn 11. But Bon Giovanni's having none of that, just shuts the door. Well, it seems like with a race this tight, someone's bound to make a mistake, and it could cost them. Well, meanwhile, Simmons has been able to pull a small lead on the rest of the pack. While the guys behind have been dicing with each other, it's caused them to go slower and has given chance to Simmons to open up some breathing room. Yeah, but Pete's also been closing up and running in second place has allowed him to let his teammate uh, have some safety while he's running cover for Simmons. But he's under fire for Bonchimani's Evo, who has opened up a small gap to Rojas and the Cobalt. Well, Pete is the team boss, and he's probably doing whatever he can to let his teammates go win the race. But it's going to be tough if he's not careful. He'll, he could lose second place and drop back. He can't just sit still and hope to block. There are way too many fast cars back there. Two, they're side by side. Bon Giovanni hits the brakes, gives up the position. That allows Rod Rojas can close in on Bon Giovanni, making it a four-way battle for second place. Uh, Bovenberg has been running very well in his Honda Civic. He's the only Honda out there with a 2-liter B-Series engine. Everybody else is running a 1.8, which is much cheaper, but Pete's gone for the extra-large motor. Because of that, he has to carry a little bit extra weight. Here goes Bovenberg at the start-finish line, pulls alongside the SRT4, takes over first place in the MBO Motorsports Red line zone perform a red zone performance. Looks like lap traffic though is blocking him up. Oh, we go three wide off to the right. Kurt Simmons loses four more positions there. Got stuck up behind lap traffic there. Wow, 
Wow, let's take a look and see what happened. First from on board, Bovenberg's car. He had a run on Simmons and goes for the pass inside turn one. Yeah, you know what companies the matters here is twofold. First, there is the lap car that they catch at the wrong moment. Pete hesitates for a second, which makes the other driver also hesitate. So for a second, neither is sure what each other is going to do. There's nothing wrong with that, but because turn one is one of the fastest turns here, you're going about 100 miles an hour at that point. So you just can't make a mistake, but with one, that one hesitation allows the guys to turn and close the gap. Yeah, now from Kurt's view, you really see what happens. He just got boxed in. I think he actually hit the lapped car. He really get, uh, came awfully close, uh, so you could have well uh, given the car a bump, but he has nowhere else to go. And so, you know, take a look. He's looking to get back on the inside of the cars, but this whole train of cars just won't let him in. Everybody's so tight with no room. It's like Baby's traffic at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. This racing has gotten so tight and so close that one mistake can really cost you dearly. Kurt went from first to fifth in one corner, and now he's trying to fight his way back. Yeah, now he's trying to get past Vaden's Butte College S2000 on the inside of turn three. Now Vaden makes a small mistake and gets gets a little sideways, which also allows Simmons to take the position. I'm getting tired of just watching this. I wonder what these guys are doing in those cars. Bovenberg, he's our new leader. And, oh, it looks like he's running into a little trouble here. And, whoa, it looks like he's spun. Bovenberg, has ta who, who took the lead half a lap ago, has just spun and nearly crashed the car at turn eight. What were you saying about mistakes? Here's a big one that just cost him the win when it looked like he had it in the bag. Yeah, now, now we're on board with Kurt Simmons. And Simmons actually came really close to T-boning his teammate and uh, taking both of them out. But uh, that was close. Now we're on board with the Cobalt, and, and uh, boy, Rojas really had a good view of it. Whoa, this was close. This could have been a huge, huge wreck. So after all that, we have yet another leader. This time, Dave Bongiovanni is the, in the good sport Mitsubishi Evo. And uh, look at that. We're going full course yellow. Full course yellow, just in time for Bongiovanni when he got the lead. There's a car in the back that has crashed and brought out a full course yellow, and there goes the safety truck and the tow truck to the rescue. You know, one of the great things about NASA is the safety crew, which is just awesome. I know it makes the drivers feel better when they know there's a good safety crew around. Well, Rick, it looks like that crash is just going to take too long to clean up, and so they're just going to come out with that checkered flag, and Dave Bongiovanni will take his first win at the USTCC. At the season opener, running on those awesome Neato NT01 tires. Side, pretty much tore the front end off, and uh, our crew, thanks to them, uh, we took the car apart, pushed everything out with a port of power, and put it back together, and managed to still, with our qualifying time from yesterday, we're still on the pole, we led most of the race until uh, one of the parts I didn't have broke. Uh, yeah, the, the Chevy uh, California Cobalt uh, handled really well. Um, the tires, you know, the, the new Neto tires. They really worked well, uh, very grippy, and uh, you know lasted throughout the entire race. Um, the car handled great. Uh, really, I mean, I was just along for the ride. Really, it uh, it was everything that I that I uh, wanted. It, it did everything that I wanted it to do. 
So we did have a tire change, and uh, your four-wheel drive Evo is one of the heavier cars out there. So what was your plan going into this to manage it? Well, definitely I didn't want to grease up the front tires too much. Uh, that was certainly a concern. And as the race progressed, uh, I, I, I got the front tires a little hot by not driving correctly. Uh, but about midway through the race, I changed my driving strategy and started using more power coming out of the turns to get all four tires working. And that allowed me to manage uh, the tire temperatures and, and stay with the pack. Outstanding. So what was your top move of the race for this time? Well, you know, I, I don't think I really had one. I basically just sat back and relaxed and drove my line and, you know, remembered all those things that all the great people at NASA have taught me over the years. And, and that allowed me to stay with the pack and take advantage of the opportunities that were presented to me. Fantastic. Well, congratulations on your great finish. <laughs> back to you guys. We're having a little too much fun. So, Jeff, we were just talking about what a great race that was. We ended up with four different manufacturers in the top four. Uh, we have we have foreign manufacturers. We have U.S. manufacturers. What do you think? What a great event. I mean, the 2008 Nitto Tires United States Touring Car Championship, I mean, what more could you ask for? There was one point we had cars three wide. We had six cars running bumper to bumper all within a second of each other halfway through the race. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better race. We had four cars on the same lap time in that group. We had cars three wide at the start. We had people in the dirt. I mean, the Evo was all over the dirt. It's just a natural rally car anyway, and that ended up winning. I mean, top rookie. A rookie wins the first race. I mean, what more could you ask for in the parody of this series? Well, Dave isn't exactly a beginner at racing in general. It seems like the new to the new rules and the uh, Nitto tires have really evened up the field. Um, I think that seeing all these cars closely bunched together definitely made for a very exciting event. And what the best part about that was is that we have such great professional drivers in the USTCC. We had no body contact. We got cars within a second of each other. We got people going three wide, passing in the dirt. There's not one dent on any of these cars, which is just amazing. It tells you what kind of quality drivers we have here in this Nitto Tire USTCC. Absolutely. You know, there's really a sense of camaraderie in the paddock. I've never seen drivers get out of their car, congratulate each other, and say, hey, what did you do for your line through turn two? It's really a fantastic atmosphere. Well, we're all just one big family, and it's been like that since the beginning. And, you know, with the great sponsors that we have with Nitto Tire, Go Go Gear, and we're just going to add more and more and more. And then NASA sanctioning the whole deal and being at these beautiful tracks all on the West Coast and across the country here for the entire Nitto Tire United States Touring Car Championship. It's going to be a great, great year. The Manufacturers Championship was what I'm excited about. We got five manufacturers in the top five, all different cars. I mean, and they're all within a second of each other on the same exact lap time. You can't ask for more parity in a series anywhere in the country right now. Thanks for joining us. Tune in again next time when we'll bring you another exciting episode of Final Drive TV with the latest news from the world of cars. For more information and to view complete episodes, please visit us at finaldrive.net.